so hey guys, this is part two. Still the same day. <laughs> um, okay, so now that I've told you about um, what all happens with those, um, let me continue on. Okay, so let me elaborate a little on each procedure. Even though you think I've probably elaborated enough. Almost 15 minutes worth. Um, so, when it comes down to breast augmentation, you have to do a lot of research. It's not tiring. It's for your own benefit and for your doctors. Um, I find that there are a lot of wish pics, which are basically pictures that, of people or how you wish to be. Or how, whatever size you want, you wish to be that size. So, um, yeah. So, basically, it's good to take a lot of pictures. I know if your husband or boyfriend looks at your phone and being like, you know, why is there nothing but ass and tits and all this stuff in your phone, you know, just, you can either explain or just snatch the phone and slap him in the face. You know what? Either way, it's fine, really. Um, but yeah, but those are your wish pictures and, um, they help your surgeon determine uh, what you want, what you don't want, you know, things like that. So that way you can communicate better and be like, oh, well, see, I like this shape because sometimes I've seen a lot of, <laughs> I'm not lesbian, I'm straight. Um, I've seen a lot of butts and after the procedure and they still look kind of flat, like they kind of slope and there's still that curve afterwards. But I don't like how they slope off. Like, it needs to be a nice curve and then go under, you know? So, yeah. So, that's something else. Um, but, oh, we're talking about breast opportunity. Sorry, off topic. Um, uh, with that, some women, you know, you'll be like, oh, well, she has 425 and hers look huge. Oh, she has 425. She should have went bigger, you know, things like that. It's very, um, it's very difficult to necessarily judge what size is best. You really have to look at the person's, you know, body type and their chest shape and see what's really great or best for you. Um, 175 to 200 cc's is how much it is per, per cup size. So, you know, if you're going up two sizes, that's 400. If you want three sizes, that's 300, that's 600. Um, things like that. So, but that's if it's, um, on top of the muscle, behind the breast tissue. So, that's something else. When you go under the muscle, uh, you lose 50 cc's. Which, basically, if you have a 500, it looks like a 450. If you have a 450, it looks like a 400. You know? Things like that. So, there are some surgeons whose motto is, when in doubt, go bigger. You know? They don't try to increase you a whole extra 100 cc's. They'll only go probably like 25, 50, or 75, you know. Um, things like that. Because they see what you want and then they see how it's going to look. Because they'll have you laying down and they'll do the surgery, but they'll also like move it upwards to where you're in an upright position and they'll see how the breasts fall and they'll increase to your size based off of how you want to look so they'll increase it because they know that with the muscle on top of it and your tissue on top of it your boob looks you know a bit smaller than you know what they saw that you wanted so they'll increase it for that um there's three actually four four incisions that you can get for breast augmentation trans umbilical which is through the belly button uh, under the breast, which is in for mammary. So basically, if you don't wear a bra, you have that little crease under your boob. That's in for mammary. Areola, which is basically going through the nipple. Well, not through the nipple, but the areola. And then the fourth is transaxillary, or yeah, transaxillary, which is your armpit. Um, so the top three most, the number one most inconspicuous is your belly button. Uh, the second is your armpit, the third is the inframammary, and the fourth most obvious is the areola. Um, if you've ever seen women who have gotten 
a list and they move that you know and you see how it's cut and everything you don't really want that you know um but it depends on implant there's saline silicone round textured low moderate high and full profile here we talk about full profile but it's a bit more projection than high profile but um, the higher the profile, the narrower the implant because it's trying to project more forward than it is trying to make it more rounder, you know. So that varies too. Um, silicone, it's very difficult to adjust with silicone. The size you get is the size you get. So you, know, you might be like, oh, I want 425. Your doctor's probably going to give you 450, 475, maybe even a 500 because he knows what results you want and he's trying to give that to you because the thing with silicone the kind of stuff is that they're already pre-filled so when they make incisions the incisions have to be bigger to fit the implant and it kind of sucks when you're trying to go up in size because you know it could be like this but with the saline it's just this little flat bag that eventually expands and expands and you can adjust it. You know, you can take out some saline. You can add in some saline. You can. It's easily adjustable with saline, which is really good. Um, I think yes, sometimes they pop, but I think it's healthier if they pop than a silicone because you have to wait uh, to get an MRI, which costs a lot of money, uh, depending on what kind of health insurance you have, in order to see if the implant has uh, ruptured or not. With saline, it'll pop. It'll deflate. You can go back in. They'll get you a new, new one. Fill it back up. You're on your way. That's it. Um. Also, with silicone, it's best if it's done inframammary, just because uh, it gives them more room to put it. Um, sometimes they'll use your armpit. They'll hardly ever use your areola, like seriously. Um, trans umbilical, it's not very much so used. I've only found one person on YouTube who has had it through the belly button. Uh, they were covered just fine. Um, I've seen a couple people with trans axillary. That looks pretty nice. Also, um, it's just a small scar on your armpit. It'll decrease and go away just like any other scar would um so so yeah so be very be very thorough with your research into breast augmentation because um you need to know exactly what you're you know getting into um I've heard surgeons say you know well you could try sizes such as the rice test or a water bag test or there's this before bra where it comes with eight sizers, or well two, two for each size, and you can go home and fill them up uh, to however many cc's, and you can put them into the bra, they have a pocket, and you can put on clothes on top of it and see how that looks. So if you're at home, own personal sizer. Um, some doctors say that's good, some say it's not. It depends on which... Uh, position you're going for where you're putting the implant. If it's behind the muscle, you might want to go with the larger one, slightly larger one, um, from what you like your results to be. Um, but if it's going underneath the tissue, then that's pretty much, that's pretty good estimate. Um, like I said, maybe slightly larger. Um, but if it's under the muscle, you might want to go extra 50 cc's on top of whatever that implant size is. Um, hmm. I think that's pretty good. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Brazilian butt lift. Some surgeons have a maximum amount of fat that they take out of you. Some don't. Sometimes it's good when they don't, uh, well, kind of good when they don't have a maximum. Uh, the maximum usually is like 5 liters. So research 5 liters in pounds and you'll see how much fat that is. 
Um, some surgeons don't have uh, some surgeons don't have a measurement just because you know you depending on somebody's body type you don't know how much fat you're going to be needing. It might be more than just that. And also they have to get healthy, living, good fat cells. And the reason why they take it from the area from the areas that you don't like is because those are places that are resistant to weight loss. They're good for weight gain, bad for weight loss. So they take all those, they take all that fat from those areas that are resistant and put it in your butt. So that way when it comes to you working out and stuff, it's it'll be much harder for you to lose your butt um, due to the fact that you know you're getting cells from a resistant place and thus your butt's going to be resistant to uh, certain workouts. Now if you're hardly getting anything done and you just want some type of like if you look on Google, if you Google volleyball butt, you'll see uh, some girls with volleyball shorts on and it's like tiny little ball, not really tiny little ball, but you know they have more projection of a butt than some girls. I'm not even gonna start on race. So yeah, than some girls. And so, um, so if you're going for something like that, you really need to take a look at your butt. You really need to look at your pre-op photos and be like, hey. If you add a little bit to your butt, you're going to get a little change. If you want a certain curve or or swoop or something, you really need to emphasize that to your surgeon and let him know, hey, this is what I want. This is really what I want. Don't be scared to go on some of them sites that have that show uh, women with big butts or whatever because you never know their butt could have been, you know, like how your butt is, and now that's how their butt is after surgery or something, you know? So, um, it's kind of good to get an estimate of where you want to be. Uh, some women, you know, they go slightly larger, like, oh, well, you know, I don't really want, you know, a giant butt. And then they come out of surgery, and they're like, surgery was so not worth it. I wanted this. Yeah, you got that. That's about as much as he gave you since that's about as much as you showed him. It's always better to go bigger. Um, when it comes to butt, not breast, but, um, sometimes breast, uh, as you already know. Um, but for butt, uh, some women get up to a thousand. I just heard one woman on Stuff, she was like, Well, I'm getting 1200 cc. I was like, 1200? What do you know what that would be in a breast cup size? That's six breast cup sizes. That's an F, I think. If you go by single mothers, that would be an F from A or G. From an A to a D is three. So, yeah, from an A to a G, it's six. Think about it like that, you know. You don't want your butt on your chest. You want it on your back, okay? Yeah. But um, yeah, some surgeons are able to put up to, you know, thousand, eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand cc's in each cheek, you know. So that's what's so good about getting the Brazilian butt lift. You don't have to worry about being okay. I want liposuction. I want it transferred to my butt, and I want my boobs done and my nose done. No. It's better if you just say you want the Brazilian butt lift because that includes liposuction and the fat transfer. You can get the breast augmentation and the nose job. It's fine. You know, but separating them up like that, it costs more and more recovery. So, you know, three months later, you'll be like, oh, I can finally go back to work. Oh, crap. I have to go and get that done. More time off for recovery. So that's why it's good to get, you know, combining surgeries. Um... Hold a minute, I'll expand on this on the second round, on the third round.